The Warriors improved to 41 and 4, tied for the best record ever in the NBA through 45 games. Yesterday, the Spurs took their seventh L this season. The first six losses, listen to this, were by a combined 33 points last night. They lost by 30. Golden State continues to play lights out. Stephen A., what do you see, expect to see from the Warriors moving forward? Well, what I expect to see is for them to break uh, the Bulls' record of 72 wins in a season. I think they're going to do it. I think they'll win at least 72 games, probably 73 games, so long as they stay healthy because I don't think, believe it or not, even though they sit here today as the reigning defending NBA champions, I don't see one single team in the NFL hungrier than they are. Nor do I see a team with their skills, their marksmanship. Draymond Green... I mean, what this brother is doing is on another level. I mean, when you consider the way he compliments everybody around him, you just can't say enough about the job that he's doing and how gifted he's become. This guy's an exceptional passer. He's an energizer bunny for the rest of the team. He rebounds. He takes on the toughest defensive assignments night in and night out in terms of front and front line players. They've got everything 1 to 12, Skip Bayless. Tell me one team in the NBA better than the Golden State Warriors. I mean, fully loaded. We ain't talking about two or three guys where they're just so head and shoulders above everybody else that you're not going to be able to beat them. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the splash. You got Steph Curry, who's a superstar in his own right. But he, his backcourt mate, is likely the second best shooter in the game of basketball. And Clay Thompson. So you got him and Clay Thompson, the best shooting backcourt in history, as far as I'm concerned. Then you've got Draymond Green, the energizer bunny who who can, who can put up triple doubles at least on an every other night basis. Okay, you've got size and Andrew Bogut. I can't believe I'm bringing up his name, but it is relevant. You've got size in him, a uh, Maurice Spates who also has size but can step away from the basket and drill perimeter jump shots. You've got Sean Livingston and Leandro Barbosa coming off the bench. You got Brandon Rush capable of giving you some things. You got Harrison Barnes and Iguodala, one or the other. Harrison Barnes usually starting, Iguodala coming off the bench. Iguodala just happens to be the reigning NBA Finals MVP. 1 to 12, you look at these guys. Who's better than them? Then they are ready to champions. Then they shoot. Then they hit free throws. Then they defend. You just look at them and you just say, and now on top of all of that, they're hungrier, and oh, by the way, they happen to have the best home crowd in the NBA. So they even have to get, even their fan base are champions, not just the team. I, I, this is unbelievable. It's unbelievable to see. And then I'm looking at who can beat them. We can't say the Cavaliers because of what we saw last Monday. So you go, and, and, and since nobody's going to beat the Cavaliers in the East, then we have to stop there. Now you look at the West. We saw what happened in San Antonio last night, although without Tim Duncan. All we have to do is pray. All we can do is pray that Popovich is going to have a scheme. He's got something up his sleeve. He didn't want to show all his cards last night. Then you've got Oklahoma City, who I still believe can make some noise. I've got to see Kevin Durant and Ibaka and Russell Westbrook against these boys. i got to see it. Outside of that, who do we have? you got Blake Griffin and the, and the Clippers. Don't get me started with that. You got Memphis and Dallas and Houston who just appear to be above average teams, but not on this level. I, 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 look, man, it, they look, I, I doubt that it'll be a cakewalk. I got to believe that San Antonio or Oklahoma City will step up or to a lesser degree the Clippers because they hate the Warriors and that could turn ugly, which is always a good thing. But in the end, I, I mean... They're shoulder, they're favorites by a comfortable margin right now. Yep. <sighs> Unfortunately, I cannot tell you how much I agree with you on this. I, I'm still reeling from what I saw last night. I did make the point to you early. I think Tim Duncan will make some difference if he plays March 19th against Golden State at San Antonio. I'm going to reiterate. My Spurs did beat this team, or, or at least last year's team, two out of three times. And yet, what I saw last night was annihilation and devastation of the highest order, where a home team was laying in wait for <laughs> a, a quote-unquote arch-rival 
who was about to engage in what was billed as the greatest regular season game ever, because you could do it statistically, obviously, off their, their one loss records this deep into the season. And it was an utter mismatch. The game was over in three minutes to my eyes. I know it stayed relatively close through the first quarter. But nobody could guard Steph Curry, which brings me to my premise about this team. I don't know that I've ever seen a team continue to play with a chip on its shoulder the way this team does. Maybe we all helped win them another championship and Steph another MVP by doubting their run through last year's playoffs. You and I talked about it. We, we didn't make a huge thing about it, but, but they did have a fortuitous run through the playoffs. I'm going to say it again because they kept drawing opponents who had an injured point guard. Now, I won't go through the litany, but it's a litany. And when I tweeted that the day after they cl clinched the championship, obviously, at Cleveland, Steph tweeted back at me that he wasn't real happy with it. And they weren't real happy with it. And then, I don't know if you remember this, but if we can go back a couple of weeks, remember they lost at Detroit? They lost by 18 at Detroit. I still don't know. That's the aberration here. They, they lost 113 to 95, and we did a topic on this show where we were both shrugging, saying, hey, maybe there is hope for the rest of the league, because all of a sudden it was looking like, well, their defense had fallen all the way to 10th in the league in, in statistical ranking, and it looked to me like at that point they were starting to get a little Steph heavy, where they, it was Steph or bust, which they weren't last year. And all of a sudden, they, they, they go to LeBron, and they're ahead by 43 and win by 34. And then a couple of nights later, they go to Chicago, and, and it was just an utter beatdown. They win by 31, and last night was an embarrassment in, in the storied annals of the San Antonio Spurs for a really good basketball team to get humiliated like that. that that's going to sting for a little while. It, you know, when my Spurs have, have a history of mailing in the odd game against Minnesota or somebody, you know, like, they, they don't care about that. But I think they cared to some degree about last night, and they realized one minute into the game the intensity of the home team was on a level defensively where it looked to me like last night Golden State was the better defensive team than the one who was holding opponents to under 90 points a game. Wow. Th this team... Stephen A, it, it, it eclipsed 90 with, I think, three minutes to go in the third quarter. That's how bad that was last night, how embarrassing that was. So they continue to have chips on shoulder where if we say one negative word on this show or any show about Steph's team, all of a sudden they say, oh, yeah? Oh, watch this. And they just turn it back up well, about five notches and blow somebody off the floor in ways in all my years of covering this league, I've never seen anything like this before. Not like well, this. Well, just remember, Skip, that just last week, sitting in this chair in Cleveland, Ohio, yep. I had to confess on national television that I had to apologize to Draymond Green for picking them to lose against the Cleveland Cavaliers. He looked at yeah. me and was like, no you, no, you didn't pick us. No, you didn't well, pick against us, Stephen it. A. And he, he got me good. He got me good. I had, mm -hmm. to, I had to own up to it. Well, I had sure. to own up to it. He got me good. Skip, I'm looking at some of their stats. They're the number one offense. They're number one in points. They're number one in assists, so they share the ball. They're number one in defensive rebounds. They're number one in two-point field goal made. They're number one in three-point percentage. They're number one in threes made. They're number one in field goals made. This is unbelievable, man. I, I, I mean, yep. I don't know how to put it to you right now. I'm just looking at them right now. It, it, it's, it's, it's scary it what I'm seeing them do. I'm looking at Steph Curry. You know, uh, Draymond Green is shooting 40% from three-point range. 40%. Steph Curry is shooting 45% from threes. Klay Thompson is shooting 42% from threes. From threes. I mean, they got three guys over 40% from three-point range, four if you count Brandon Rush, who only attempts like two a game from there. Yep. I, I, this, is, this is some scary stuff. And then when you look at their free throws, Steph Curry shoots 91% from the free throw line. And Klay Thompson shoots yep. 82% from the free throw line. 
I, 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 what okay. do you say? And we, what do you, do you say? allow me to add one last plus for Steph Curry? We've raved and raved till we're out of superlatives about his offense. I got to tell you, he, he is a disruptive defender of the highest order. Tony Parker was completely taken out of the game defensively by Steph Curry last night. Tony Parker's just, he just can't even hold on to the ball. Steph had five steals last night, most of them from Tony Parker's pocket, picked his pocket. So don't, don't listen, you talk about two-way just dominance, that, that's what well, we're seeing here. I would say first take needs to stop showing that highlight, the behind-the-back move. Yeah. It was pretty. But he had about six or seven other moves that we could show because <laughs> he put on a show last yeah. night. Yep. I mean, they, 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 the, the highlight people need to update some stuff. There's at least six or seven other highlights yeah. where Steph Curry just put on, just danced on people. I just want to point that Not out. Not difficult to find a Curry highlight. No, that team playing with a chip on their shoulder and having fun. Deadly combination kind of similar to those Carolina Panthers. Curry is becoming the first family of basketball here. Appears. VY back in the news, unfortunately, for all the wrong reasons. We'll discuss and explain the significance on this Vince Young subject when we come back. Stay here, it's first take.